Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 98 Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Education is generally recognized as the major instrument for promoting socio-economic, political, and cultural development of any nation. We've been aware of the fact that uh, educational institutions contribute to production of future leaders and development of uh, high-level technical expertise, which underpin economic growth and development. Many of us are familiar with the national policy on education, particularly as it relates to higher education, so I wouldn't bother us with the details. However, and unfortunately, education in Nigeria is beset by a multiplicity of problems, making it unable to fully achieve the stated policy objectives. And on a general note, it has been said that the education system is weak in Nigeria and the satisfaction with the quality of education is the highest in the world. I dare say also that virtually all the problems of education in the country are well known and have been subjects of discussion at various conferences, workshops, and what have you. Yet these problems persist. And uh, for whatever the worth of the exercise, we can broadly identify the problems of the educational sector in the country as being traceable to four sources, namely, one, proprietors of educational institutions, by which I mean federal, state, and perhaps local governments, as well as private individuals and groups and their agents or agencies. The second source is the management of the educational institutions. Then we have the student factor and lastly, and perhaps the most important, the staff factors, especially the teaching staff factors. The importance of teachers or the teacher let's use the singular form, in the educational process has been summarized by uh, Eriba in 2009, who gathered some opinions. And permit me to read some of the opinions he gathered to, together as follows. One opinion, according to Ukeje 1966, is that uh, in any educational process, there always stands the teacher in front or at the back, at the center or at the sides. What he knows and does can make a great difference, and what he does not know or cannot do or face to do can be irreparable loss to the children under his care. Another person, Lassa, in 1990, stated as follows, that he or she, that is the teacher, is a manager of ideas and activities, the judge of disciplinary cases, the molder of character, the rearer of human minds, the mobilizer of students' efforts, and indeed, the window through which pupils visualize the world around them. The UKJ that was cited earlier continued also as follows that while we can manage without adequate classrooms, books and teaching aids, 
we cannot do without good teachers. If a doctor makes a mistake, a patient may die. If an engineer makes a mistake, a bridge or a structure may collapse. If a lawyer makes a mistake, somebody may lose his liberty. But if a teacher makes a mistake, generations yet unborn may suffer the consequences. Why mistakes of other professions are overt and transient, mistakes of teachers are covert and indelible. And finally, Eriba stated or restated what is contained in the scriptures, particularly James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 from the New Life Version, as follows. My Christian brothers, not many should become teachers. If we do wrong, it will be held against us, more than other people who are not teachers. We all make many mistakes. If anyone does not make a mistake with his tongue by saying the wrong things, he is a perfect man. So we can appreciate the importance of the teacher from these uh, quotations and many other things that we, by the grace of God, have listened to in the course of this conference. So we can safely conclude that the most critical factor in the education sector relates to the teachers in terms of quality or competence, quantity, character, and performance among other attributes, because the teacher is the role model to his or her student. The subject matter before us is how to equip the Christian teacher for service. Before we go into that, let me, for whatever the value, uh, repeat the fact that the circumstances under which teachers became teachers very widely. Whereas some deliberately make, made up their minds to pursue teaching as a career, others were forced by circumstances. For example, no other forms of employment or having been forced by admission problems to read education courses. Actually, Oyindo in uh, 2004 identified five groups in the composition of the academic complement of staff found in any typical Nigerian university. And I want to uh, quickly refer to them because it will be interesting for you to take note. The first group, he said, are those who made up their minds at an early stage, probably during their undergraduate studies, to pursue an academic career despite the attractions and allure of the civil service and the private sector. These youngsters were good students themselves in the first place and were fired by the thirst for knowledge and motivated by the simple but sometimes weighed lifestyle of dedicated and committed hard work, courage and obvious distinction of their professors and lecturers. Group two comprises of those who had all the ingredients of productive scholarship but could not make up their minds early enough. They ventured into the world of the civil or public service or the private sector and made good success of themselves. But they found no satisfaction and were often in conflict with their setup because of the academic mindset in them that continually yearned for expression and satisfaction. These people ultimately relocated to the universities often at great personal loss of salary and or rank. Then we have group three, comprising of those who never had any inclination for scholarship and the rigors entailed. They went into other ventures and ran out when they were stared in the face with either failure or punishment for their misdeeds. Next is group four, which sought convenience of location or family circumstances and took up academic appointments. But the common denominator is that both in spirit and content, they did not have the makeup of academics. The rapid expansion of universities and of the fortuitous intervention of friends and families got them a place in the university. And finally, 
we have group five made up of those who were neither endowed for nor interested in academic they were forced into it by unemployment they got jobs in the universities mainly because there were still and still there were and still are vacancies created by brain drain and lack of interest in academic positions by more endowed individuals who were attracted elsewhere by better remuneration and working conditions. No wonder we have uh, what we can call cheaters rather than teachers in our uh, educational system. You know that cheaters and teachers are spelled with the same letters, isn't it? Okay. And we know the kind of depravity that cheaters exhibit and all that. Now, equipping the Christian teacher for service, I have treated under four or five broad areas as follows. Psychologically, spiritually, professionally, socially, and generally. What about the psychological equipping of the teacher? Now that we have recognized the centrality of the teacher in the efforts to transform our nation, we need to accept the reality of being in the teaching profession, regardless of the circumstances that brought us in. Why won't you believe that God in his sovereignty brought you in, especially if you have all along committed your ways into his hands? It is time to do away with the low or poor perception of our standing in the society or nation as teachers. Uh, even amongst us, like uh, we earlier told by Brogbile, even among us who are teachers, many of us wouldn't want our children to take to teaching profession. It is that bad because of the low perception of the teacher in the society. So psychologically, we must reorient ourselves to accept that teaching is a noble profession. Everybody else passes through the hands of the teacher, the lawyer, the medical doctor, the engineer, and all of you, whoever you care to mention as we've been previously told. And the next thing we should do is our spiritual equipping. Because naturally there is nothing good in any man except somebody who has been transformed himself can be expected to be an agent of transformation. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 33 we hear our Lord Jesus Christ telling us that a tree can bring forth fruit only of its own kind. So we need God to change our inherent nature for us to be good teachers or the kind of transforming agents that we're looking for. Can I quickly digress and uh, tell you of this experiment that some Russian scientists engaged in many years ago? in the era of uh, communism, in the hope that they could produce uh, human, human beings conditioned by the environment to behave better. They started off, as scientists normally will do, by conducting experiments with rats. And what did they set out to do? They hoped to produce tailless rats by cutting the rats, I mean, tails of rats, and mating such uh, artificial tailless rats in the hope that somewhere along the line, they will be able to generate tailless rats. But unfortunately, they never succeeded. Did you follow my narration? Okay. So, the inherent quality to produce tail is in the rats whether or not you cut off the tail, unless you change the nature of rats, that that gene for producing tail is removed. Just like we've mentioned of human beings that the tendency to do wrong is with us, except God changes us. So 
the spiritual equipping which we have been discussing in uh, various workshops, I believe uh, is relevant to us. We would next talk about professional equipping. And again, some of this we've been treating in our workshop groupings. For example, the issue of uh, profe uh, further studies. In my own workshop grouping, I gave the example of one of us who is right here. I won't mention his name, but he knows himself. And a number of us probably know him. Who started his uh, teaching career as a grade two teacher. He didn't even go to secondary school, if I remember the story well. And from there, he moved on to become an NC graduate, underwent first degree program, master's PhD. By today, by the grace of God, he's a professor. I wouldn't tell you the discipline, so you know, won't begin to know on those around for who I'm talking about. So we need further studies for enhancement of our professional performance. A teacher is a teacher, whether grade two or PhD holder or professor. I tell people around me that Oga get Oga. Most of my teachers in primary school were grade two teachers. As far as we knew then, those were the only teachers in the world. But such teachers I met in life, I mean some of them I met later in life, who went on to improve themselves up to first degree or even master's degree level, telling us about the need for further studies, for enhancement of our professional competence, and also for career advancement. Because uh, the influence of a grade two teacher cannot be compared to a master's degree holder or PhD degree holder who is operating at a higher level, who is training teachers to I mean, a teacher of, of teachers, okay? And uh, in my own workshop group, uh, we gave this example of somebody I used to know as a typist when I began teaching uh, several years ago. And when she decided to go for degree studies, I actually wondered whether she was not wasting her time because she was already married. But can I tell you that that lady ended up earning a degree, and by today, she's one of our senior administrators in my university. I recall also the example of a friend of mine who, as a school site holder, was working with an oil company. Even though I didn't know his salary then, but knowing what oil companies pay generally, I had imagined that as a school site holder, he was probably earning close to the salary of a degree holder. And I wondered why he would abandon that and uh, go to school. But today, he is a professor of world renown. So, as we've been told, as teachers, we're the light of the world. We do know also that the light system we have here now, if they were brought lower than they are placed now, would they be giving as much illumination to us? But because they are up there, they are able to give better illumination. The same thing goes for us. The higher we are placed in our professional uh, situation, the better the influence we are able to make. So let us make efforts to go for higher, uh, for further studies. I do know also that in the university system, particularly, there is this rule that if you don't acquire a PhD, you may not become senior lecturer, which means you'll be stagnated at the level of lecturer one, no matter how good academically. I used to have a friend with master's degree. I don't know whether he now has a PhD, but he was such a good academic. He was stagnated because of not having acquired a PhD. So it means one can be frustrated. You see people you think are not as good as you, but because they have PhD, they are progressing while you are stagnated. So please, if your institution requires acquisition of PhD or higher degrees, please go for such training. The other thing about professional equipping is the idea of teamwork or networking. The need for us to learn from others and allow others to learn from us. Again, 
in our workshop groupings, we discussed about Bezalel and Holiab, who were skilled, who were endowed by God, but not only that, they taught some other people. And uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, we read of Paul talking to Timothy that the things he had learned of him, he should commit to faithful brethren who will be able to teach some other people. In academics, it is known as mentoring, or if you like, academic discipleship. You study under somebody who puts you through. Even though some people may be able to forge ahead on their own, groping in the dark, kind of, their progress will not be as fast as somebody who submits to learning under somebody who is ahead of him or her. So we cannot overemphasize this aspect of learning under some other persons and uh, being ready to teach some other persons. It's been said that success without a successor is what? You help me finish it up. The next aspect of our equipping as a teachers has to do with attendance at seminars and workshops for personal improvement. Even your local institutional seminars, it is good you attend. I tell people that I wouldn't like to miss opportunities to participate in seminars because what you gain in one hour or two hours, you may never gain reading on your own for months or years because you get opportunity or you have opportunity to listen to people present what they have spent so much time doing, apart from their own uh, research efforts, even if it has to do with literature survey and all that. So let's get to make habit of attending seminars, whether local or national or whatever level, so that we can be current to know what developments are taking place in our professions. That is where you get to know. Then the aspect of publications in journal articles and uh, books and all that. As we said earlier on, this may be for our career advancement or promotion. As we know, there are situations where it is said you either publish or perish. So we need to do such things. But we need to be careful in selecting quality journals like our worship. A member of our workshop group shared with us, these days we have all kinds of journals, especially on the internet. Some of them are useless journals. So not all things. We will soon be talking about the uh, internet and all that. But let's quickly talk about quality of journals that we publish in. It's important because not all journals are acceptable in all situations. I sincerely don't mean to be offensive, but for example, if you are teaching in the university and you indulge in publishing in College of Education journals, you may be shocked to discover that your journals or your articles may not be accepted at that level. Okay? So, you want to also get reliable persons to vet the drafts of your papers intended for publication so you don't encounter much difficulties. I say reliable people because we have heard stories of situations where somebody will give a draft to another person to, to vet. Before you know it, that person has perfected it and got it published elsewhere. All kinds of malpractices take place. We should talk about membership of professional bodies also. Uh, where we get exposed to senior colleagues who have things to offer us, and even some junior colleagues who are more brilliant to us than us. And when we get involved in membership of uh, professional bodies, we may be indirectly influencing our society because some of these professional bodies make policies for the society. And so we can have avenue of uh, influencing the society indirectly when we get to particip participate, especially when we hold positions in such 
professional bodies. The next one we like to talk about is particularly critical. Information and communication or ICT competence. Somebody gave this illustration in my workshop group that being termed old school or new school very soon will not be so much of age, chronological age, but as to whether you are ICT compliant or not. Are you listening to me? You may have old people who are ICT compliant and they would be operating like new school people, okay? Whereas there are young ones who are not co uh, competent or compliant and they will be left behind, okay? So the point to make here is that competence in information and communication technology or technologies uh, open a lot of avenues for us to get equipped professionally. We have a lot of resources on the internet that we can tap from if we're competent in ICT. For example, we know there are search engines that can help you locate whatever kind of resources you are looking for. Just because you are competent to use the search engines. In fact, lecture notes, whole lecture notes can be downloaded from the internet. Whole textbooks can be downloaded. Journal articles or journals themselves, curricula of various institutions, conference papers, and all that are placed on the internet. All we need to do is access the internet and we are able to download them. Okay? But if we are not competent, we will have difficulties. I, a few days ago, had reason to present a paper and all I needed to do is outline the areas I wanted to focus on and to get current relevant data, I asked one of my junior colleagues to assist me for reasons of time to go get issue, I mean data along the line I was uh, going to be speaking. Of course, it made my presentation more meaningful because I was able to give current data. For example, I needed to talk about how many universities we have in Nigeria today. And uh, I could segregate them into federal, state, and all that, amounting to 117. And of course, you know that only this year alone, the federal government set up nine federal universities. I was able to talk with statistics about those issues, and my presentation, I believed, made more sense. Of course, we know of uh, social networks or discussion groups. Uh, we talk about Facebook, Twitter, and all that as avenues for interaction on the internet. Uh, somebody, we know, not just somebody said. I know as a matter of fact, because I have read related matters in, the, uh, in some newspapers about our, even our president being on the Facebook and uh, interacting with people. Uh, so these are all facilities that we can enjoy if we're uh, competent or literate. I can also mention of a friend of mine who, because of contributing to some discussions that were going on on the internet, he got invited for an international conference that gave him a lot of benefits. And many of us know of uh, people who landed themselves sponsorship for conferences or some jobs because they went on the internet, they browsed, and they did whatever was required of them to do. I should also mention the fact that I'm reliably told that uh, in no distant future, perhaps in the next jam, examination will be conducted electronically. So we talk of uh, e-learning, electronic learning, electronic examination, 
electronic banking, e-banking, e-commerce, e-water view. It is soon going to, I mean, many of us are going to become obsolete if we don't get to be competent, not by virtue of age now, but by virtue of not being literate, computer-wise. Okay? So, I'm told that uh, the next jam may be conducted electronically. So you can imagine what will happen to people who are not literate. I sincerely hope we will utilize this awareness to sensitize our people, our students, our relations to get equipped as well as ourselves. Uh, the same thing for school certificate exams and all that. Of course, we know that some universities are already con uh, conducting their post-UME tests electronically. I was told of a university that conducted their own tests just on Saturday last week, and by Monday, Tuesday, the results were already out. And candidates can already decide, I mean, can, can get feedback whether they are being considered for admission or not. So what does this boil down to? The fact that we must, of necessity, undertake training if we are not yet compliant. Somebody said some of us are scared to even touch computers as if there is something that will jump out and attack us. I think that is the phobia for those of us who are getting old anyhow. Because younger people are more curious, they are more inquisitive, but the fact is that we will soon have no choice. Okay? So we must undertake training if we are not yet literate. And not just to undertake training, we must own our own computer. Either desktop, laptop, or whatever you can afford. And uh, with the accessories, the printers and scanners, in some cases, some of us have uh, modems from different sources or different types that while we are seated in our sitting room or room or wherever, we can even connect to the internet. We, can, we don't have to go to cyber cafes. There are such provisions. Some of us have handsets that we can use to browse. Isn't it? They will cost us a little more, but the benefits to derive from such facilities cannot be quantified. Until sometime earlier this year, I used to have one uh, local handset that was just sufficient, but I found I needed to be able to do some things on the net with my handset, so I had to spare some uh, money to be able to buy one that could get me connected to the internet, which means that we must be ready to expend our resources. When we got our personal computer many years ago, it was my wife that moved for it. Initially, I didn't see the sense in putting money that we could have used for some other purposes into the, buying a computer. But I can tell you I have come to appreciate the utility. Again, when opportunity came for me to buy a laptop, I was not sure I wanted it. I thought the PC was enough, but I'm not regretting that uh, I bought the laptop and whatever you can afford. So we need one because if you undergo training and you don't have your own facility to practice with, as uh, some of us who have done it over and over will confess to you, the things soon evaporate because it's not something to just learn theoretically. You have to practice. So whatever it will cost you to own your own facilities, please do. Uh, we have talked about some other things that you can derive from the internet, but even owning your own laptop or your computer, you can do your own typing. You don't have to run after people to type for you. You can do your data analysis if you will take time to learn how to do it. You can make your presentations more uh, interesting. For example, if my presentation today had been put in PowerPoint mode for me to project for you to see, you'll be able to follow uh, a little more than 
what is happening now. I apologize like I brought Tagema did earlier on that for some logistic reasons uh, I'm unable to I'm simply copying from him. You know it was my principal when I underwent uh, Millet here, so he was my teacher. So I'm doing not better than my teacher in that case. So we've talked about benefits of the internet, how we need to get ourselves trained. It's nothing too difficult. Actually, there are some of us in this assembly here who would tell you that they didn't have anybody to train them. But because they bought their own computers, either laptop or personal or desktop computers, they sat there because the computer to a large is interactive. There are facilities for you to learn on your own if you just make up your mind. I will soon be talking about attitudinal change if time permits. Uh, because some of these things have to do with our attitude. So we have talked about application of our personal resources. It's part of our equipping. I've just mentioned in terms of uh, purchasing our own computer facilities and all that. But not just our computer facilities. As part of our equipping, we need to purchase our own books. We need to purchase our own journals and all that. Some of us, at some levels, are even paid allowances for books and journals. Isn't it true? But how often do we get to buy books? and these journals that we are paid allowances for. We should also talk about self-sponsorship for conferences and workshops. Uh, there was one conference I attended, and because of the benefit I derived so much, I promised myself that even if I were not to be sponsored, I would not want to miss uh, such conferences and workshops because I benefited a lot from such things. So, we must be ready to make sacrifices. I told you of that my friend who is a professor somewhere in, he's in Nigeria here. But I can tell you, this man has challenged me a lot. After many years, I got reconnected to him in 2004. And I told him I wished I could have one or two weeks to be an apprentice to him. Because under God, I can say this man is self-made because I remember as an undergraduate he had a typewriter of his own and he knew how to type and all that so he equipped himself over time no wonder he has reached the height which he by the grace of God has reached today so we cannot overemphasize the aspect of being ready to apply our personal resources in our equipping or getting equipped for service as Christian teachers. The other aspect I'd like to talk about is social equipping. Social equipping. And by this, I mean our listening to news, either on radio, television, satellite, reading newspapers, and all that. How many of us got to know about certain disasters that happened in Japan earlier in the year. The flooding, otherwise called tsunami, and uh, the problem of the nuclear plant in that country, which eventually led Germany, if I'm not mistaken, to make a change in policy with regards to their power supply. I'm told that Germany has now, as a result of that disaster, decided that by year 2020 or so, they will be reverting to the conventional power generation because they wouldn't want to subject their nationals to the kind of uh, problem that happened in Japan. Isn't that a matter that an engineer can bring up to teach students? Or when your students are bringing such issues up, wouldn't you look ridiculous that as their teacher, you are not aware of such a development? Or if you are an agricultural teacher, you probably 
got to know of the E. coli infection that took place in some European countries, which also led Russia or some other countries to ban importation of vegetable from such places. These are issues, current issues, that our students shouldn't be telling us. We should be ahead of our students for us to maintain our integrity as uh, teachers. Or do we talk about the clamor for democracy in the Middle East in recent times? Wouldn't it be a good teaching material for political scientists? So from listening to news, we can get current issues to teach our students with. So much about uh, social equipping. I want to talk about something general, and that is familiarity with conditions of service in our various workplaces. There are conditions that govern our services in our workplaces. Some of them may be in written form, some may not be in written forms, but generally there are written, I mean, they are in written forms, I believe, but some are by traditions. Whichever form they are, we need to familiarize ourselves with them because if we don't, we may be getting into trouble. For example, in the university system, if you are employed as a graduate assistant and within three to four years, depending on your local institution and their provisions, you are not able to acquire a master's degree, you are taken as good as terminated. You will just be fortunate if they don't remember to apply that rule on you. But one day, for whatever reason, somebody may rise up and begin to apply that rule. And tendency may be to say they are witch hunting us, they are being wicked to us. It's simply because you are not aware that that rule exists. And ignorance, we're told, is no defense in law. The same thing goes for acquisition of PhD, as I mentioned earlier on, that there are institutions that if you don't have a PhD, you cannot go beyond certain levels. So if you are not aware of such requirements and it catches up with you, you have yourself to blame. I should like to quickly uh, talk about attitudinal change. I came across this recently and I thought it was uh, copyrighted to the fellow who gave us a, a lecture at the oath taking of the veterinary students or graduates in my university until I was speaking with one of my students, our not student, former student now, a younger colleague, who told me that he also had the matter in his uh, system because somebody sent it to him because it's an internet stuff. I think on the internet you may locate it, it's uh, mathematics of life or so. But it has to do with attitudinal change. And it goes simply like this, sorry, I don't have it in, uh, the form that you can view. I sincerely hope those of us not familiar with this uh, will be able to follow me. It goes like this. If letters A to Z or Z is equal to 1 to 26, you know those are 26 alphabets. Huh? So attach letter 1, I mean figure 1 to A and 26 to Z or Z depending on whether you're American or British. If you do that, and you sum up for hard work, you will find that hard work will not give you 100%. At best, you come up with 98. And if you do it for knowledge, it will amount to 96. If you do for love, that is, letter L-O-V-E, translated to 12 plus 15 plus 22 plus 5, will give you 54. Next, if you do it for luck, you know many of us be, say it's, it's his own luck, now in luck shine. Eh? If you do it for luck, it will amount to only 47%. So luck doesn't carry anybody so far. I don't believe in luck anyway. 
even before I got to know about this. So what makes 100%? Is it money? No. If you do it for money, you come up with 72%. Is it leadership? No. Leadership will give you 89% by that exercise. It is said that to every problem, there is a solution. And perhaps if we change our attitude, we can get to the top. The many things that we mentioned relating to our professional equipping relate to matters of attitude. Okay? So if we really want to get the 100%, what should we do? It is our attitude. By the time you sum up those values for attitude, 1 plus 20 plus 20 plus 9 plus 20 plus 21 plus 4 plus 5, you get 100%. So, it is our attitude towards life and work that makes our life 100%. Please, brethren, let us change our attitude to the teaching profession and we will have it 100%. Thank you for your attention. The aspect of this attitudinal change is where I wanted more explanation, please, sir. <laughs> the attitudinal change, I didn't understand it. I was raising her to ask about it. The uh, Bible tells us very clearly that love is the greatest. It covers everything. And that if we must do the work of God for which we are here to serve God as teachers, love is, is very is primary, is critical. But the scientist is telling us that attitude is the greatest. So how do we reconcile the two? Prof, when you were talking about policies in education, you seem to assume so many things. You just gloss over it because these people from even primary school secondary school even down to tertiary because i could see that you tailor this thing to more of tertiary where your your constituency is and i'm very much aware that you are familiar with some of the policies of education that could benefit them i would have wanted you to throw more light to some of these policies sir Thanks. Okay. Uh, we the teachers, sir, we the teachers usually use the, the word hard work for the students. That when there is hard work, there will be sources. Now we are looking at attitude as the one that carried the hundred percent. May I know the difference between, the real difference between hard work and attitude? In the present situation of our country, Nigeria now, we discover that it's only knowledge. The man may be drinking, he may be sleeping with students in the campus, he may be, his life may not be, but when he has knowledge, they will employ him. I want to ask, when will this attitude, be, because he carried 100%, but in, in Nigeria today, when they see a man that is knowledgeable, they don't want to care. If he's, if he's if imparting knowledge on the student, and he's drunk and the attitude is not good, they will have to employ this kind of person because of the certificate. I want you to, to expatiate on that, sir. Thank you very much for your questions. I think they all revolve around attitude. And most of them revolve around attitude. Let me answer the policy question straight away. Uh, I confess that when it comes to education in strict terms i'm not an educationist i'm actually an agriculturist okay so i don't claim knowledge of uh, the policies at all levels i actually got to know about those ones specifically uh, as relate to higher education because i needed to do a paper on uh, the university system uh, 
which I presented somewhere a few days ago. Uh, but I do know that on a general note, we have had problems with policies in our educational system. Uh, actually, I could say we have had policy somersaults. We were talking of, uh, I don't know, sorry, I, I, I'm a bit uncomfortable to delve into this because maybe an educationist will probably be required to help me out. But I know that a number of decisions have been taken uh, which re uh, later were reversed in terms of our educational system. For example, there was this drive to privatize uh, unity schools a few years ago. And the way it was coming up as if it was caught, nailed and dried, or how do English people put it? But today we thank God that the unity schools are still with us. There was this uh, something about not having a uh, junior WAEC anymore. I don't know. Where are we today? Maybe some other persons, like I said, I need help here. I'm not really uh, knowledgeable, strictly speaking, on uh, the policy aspects. But I know that we can generate uh, some issues to affect the policy situations. Some people begin to initiate processes that lead to wherever we are today. Uh, once upon a time, we used to have arithmetic at primary school, just like uh, Brogbile told us. In arithmetic, we were exposed to mental things. Now they are talking of mathematics. Actually, I appeared somewhere recently, and uh, I was questioned on this, where I shared my experience that I did my youth call in a school where I had to teach arithmetic and all that. And somebody couldn't just imagine what I was talking about, that where was it that I was teaching arithmetic? But that was what it used to be in those days. Now you talk of mathematics and what are the components. Uh, even in our institutions, we have changed our curricula over and over again. I recall that when I newly joined my university, there was a course known as Botany of Tropical Crops, which I was teaching, and which gave room for us to expose students to specimens and all that. But that course no longer exists. There used to be a course known as uh, Principles of Genetics or something at 200 level. Now we don't have any such thing at 200 level. They come to 300 level and are confronted with uh, uh, crop breeding and genetics. They were never given opportunity to learn genetics at a lower level. And it has created some gaps and all that. And these are all policy issues. Because now we have a NUC benchmark, although you could say it is the minimum standard, it doesn't say we shouldn't introduce but the workload is so much that introducing some other courses will make the students get too loaded beyond what they can cope with and all that. So uh, I don't know whether I will have a volunteer to help me about uh, policy issues. Now the other issues about uh, questions about uh, somebody who, is, uh, who has the thing up there, but character-wise, if you look at the higher education policy, seven objectives there. Issue of character is there. So if you have somebody who has the technical knowledge, but character-wise is, is depraved, leading to sexual harassment of females and all whatnot, even extortion in general terms, such people can be sacked because they are not doing what is expected of lecturers or teachers, okay? Uh, I know that there is effort to, or attempt to ensure that student rating of lecturers or teachers is part of their evaluation for promotion. But in many institutions, that is being resisted. 
because of the likelihood of uh, some heads of institutions to use it to which aren't. But depending on how it is ad administered, it can help to check out such uh, teachers or lecturers who are deficient in characters. Okay? So the issue of uh, knowledge and not relating it to attitude or whatever, I don't know there. Now, let me take together these other issues of uh, hard work versus attitude and love and all that. You see, attitude covers virtually all things. You talk about hard work. What, what is your attitude to hard work? How do you mean by hard work? When I was in lower six, I was told of one of my classmates who said there was no sleeping at A level. So she was always reading, reading, reading. Her attitude to reading was wrong. Her attitude to hard work was wrong. And you probably know of people who exert themselves so much. I gave the example in my own workshop group of one of my lecturers who, as far as we students were concerned, was a hard worker. But unfortunately, his hard work didn't translate to promotion. As I later discovered, we saw him physically, I mean, he was physically exercising himself. His physical exercise in terms of going to the field and all that did not translate to publication. And I remember also my own supervisor as a graduate student at one point called me and said, young man, I'm not training you to be a technician. I'm training you to be an academic. Because he saw that I loved to be on the field. My attitude was wrong. I was training to be an academic. And I did not understand that I needed to work on the field, come back and work in the lab or the office, and put my data together. So we can relate all these things still to attitude. And uh, talking about love, yes, love is, is good. But can I give this illustration from a proverb in Yoruba language that the love that the keeper of chicken eh, exhibits is not actually from the bottom of the stomach. Eh? It is so that you could feed the chicken, get it to the point of slaughtering. What some of us actually call love may not be love. Okay? Love in the, with the proper attitude is not exploitative, is it? But we know that what many of us call love is lost. Are we there? So the correct love with the proper attitude we get out there. Is that okay? Uh, I don't know what else to do to the first questioner who said she was not clear about it. The thing is that any law, any word that you want to subject to this mathematics of life, eh? Simply get the letters. I'll give you some examples here. I said letters A, B, C, D, E to Z are equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 to 26 respectively. So if you take hard work now, H is 8, A is 1, R is 18, D is 4. W is 23, O is 15, R is 18, K is 11. When you sum up all those, you have 98. And for knowledge, K is 11, N is 14, O is 15, W is 23, L is 12, E is 5, D is 4, G 7, E 5. You sum up, you get 96 and so on and so forth for lock l is 12 u is 21 c is 3 k is 11 so you get 47 percent for lock uh, i hope i have satisfied that uh, questioner in that wise well that's all i can say i'm still waiting for the volunteer to help me about the policy issues praise the lord 
I don't know how many of you were in school or you were writing common entrance to secondary school. That time we had what they call verbal aptitude and quantitative aptitude. Can I see your hands? Okay, very few. What that man did is a quantitative aptitude that he made one to be A and Z to be 26. You can also make Z one and you go backward and A 26. It just, if you remember, it's just that the objective is to make you think fast in those days when we were doing the quantitative uh, aptitude. So we just want to stress that it's not what you carry away as if there's a, even if there's a publication on it, the emphasis is attitudinal change. They need to change your attitude. Somebody says that if you are psychologically defeated on any matter, however hard you work on it, you will fail. I don't know whether you have, those of us, you may have failed some courses before, carryovers. And you know that some of them, the, the more you write, just as we were told about GCE and school SAT, the more you try to write, the better the failure. <laughs> so that even if you had uh, uh, P7 in our time, it will go to P8. Before you know it, already you are having 9. So what the emphasis is that, like uh, Paul says, I can do all things. Through who? Through Christ that gives me strength. That is what we look for. It's not even positive thinking. It is faith in Christ that he that is in me, as you read in Colossians chapter, is it 2 verse what? 13 or 12. Is the secret of all wisdom. They are hid in Christ. So don't uh, battle with attitude and battle with love. The Bible says love is the greatest and love remains the greatest. Praise the Lord. Somebody who is in policy will come and help us, but before he comes, maybe I'll say things that will challenge him and he may talk more than the question. I found out that the present day policy makers are not making policy for Nigerian nation. They make policy for the elite group, even in education. I may be wrong, he will speak to all of it. In the sense like the one that was talked about, Jam wants people to be writing Jam through uh, e-line or internet or computer. In my village, there are schools that don't have teachers. No talk of uh, computer. I don't know whether it's a, it's a gentle, it, it may be Atalia, Atalia approach. So we have somebody from uh, the ministry. Please, can you speak to the policy uh, issues? Okay, you are the one who asked the question, so you will come and uh, speak to it for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a national conference, and it's a very unique opportunity for us to have some very basic things concerning our life and future. I will just mention about three or four policies. Very simple, but if somebody does not know, you may be living in a fool's paradise. One, look at some years they set up something they call TRCN, Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. Because of the importance of teaching, they don't want to make it all commerce job. This council was set up and it has offices all over the nation, even zonal offices, that in some time to come, 
if you did not read education, you will be arrested for teaching in the classroom. If you are an engineer, the safe way for you, just go and do PGD, then you are qualified to register. And the minimum they are using in registering, before it used to be 1,000, 2,000, 1,000 for NC, 2,000 for degree, uh, 3,000 for PhD. But now, they've jacked everything up. For example, Federal uh, FCT wanted to recruit some teachers recently. They said, number one, thing, even if you have first class in education, if you don't have that teacher registration council, you will not be considered. And I was surprised when I went as far as Karan Aboda. Somebody was telling me there about what is happening in Abuja. I said, even myself, I don't know. He was the one even telling me that this is the, the, the requirement. So for all of us that are teachers, it's very good. It will not cost us anything. Because you don't know tomorrow. This one is very, very important. Another one is issue of French. We were in National Council on Education, and some people are saying, don't teach French. Why should you teach French? I've not even know how to say in Aquana or Ekaro or Wasavi, Wasovia. You are telling us to be learning French. But there are a lot of advantages in learning French. And they pass it as a policy. Now, look at all the countries that surround Nigeria. They are French-speaking countries. You need this French to communicate with them. Secondly, if you understand French and you have the certificate, you are opportune to have international job like ECOWAS, African Union, and so on. And you can even be an interpreter to the president. There is one, Shola Atere, this man, he, he, he understands about five different international languages. And that's why anywhere President Olusha Gobasanjo was going, he keeps on going because he interprets. So this is one of them. Then look at this new syllabus they are bringing to secondary school, SSC. By this September, it's kicking off. They are given every school to take at least one compulsory course subject in about 35 trade subjects. You must tailor them to do one of them. People need to know all these things. The syllabuses are there with National uh, uh, Nigerian Education Research and Development Council. They have about 43 syllabus. Syllabuses printed or syllabi as the case may be that people can go and purchase and put these children through. Any of them, there you can see uh, computer repairing, dying, a lot of things like that. Because they, want, they don't just want them to go to school, they want the school to go through them. Another one is uh, even of setting up of schools. You know, somebody may just wake up and bring this Julius Berger caravan and put it down and now write upon it, so, 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 international school. All these things, they are misnomer. Somebody is coming someday that will rub off all these things. So when you are setting up school, there are policies, there are things you go, you go to Federal Minister of Education, go to State Minister of Education. I want to set up this thing. How do I go about it? So that you don't just set up something, and somebody just one day is bulldozed on his council. You waste your resources, waste your life. There are quite a lot of them. But this is not a, a place for issue of policy. But I just think this one is, it suffices us. Especially the one that concerns us about registering as a professional teacher. Early this year, before a pre-post, the president organized a national educational summit. If you see the document, it's very, very important for everybody to even be informed of what they are saying. And what interests me most is the aspect that teaching, teachers' issue occupied to the extent that they are now going for teacher policy, national teacher education policy, intent. It's not something we just live like that. So what they are telling us here it's a very serious thing. Don't let us take it for granted. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you very much for the input. But I think I was more, my problem increased. <laughs> we are not saying that policy should not change. But let's look at the policy for our level of development. If there is any policy that will increase the number of teachers, please let's do so. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one from the village. If I call some of you, in a secondary school, there was a time in one secondary school in my village, there was only the principal and one other teacher. The, gov the, the government terminated the appointment of uh, people. Please, carry our cries and burdens to up there. Let's not make policy that will eliminate some of us. If those policies were in place, Billy and myself wouldn't have gone to school. <laughs> and all of us, many of us who are here. But uh, two things have affected our lives. And I always tell my children, opportunity to go to school and opportunity to give my life to Christ. When you miss those things, and when these children miss any of those two things, they have missed and lost out of life. Praise the Lord. 